Your favorite urban legends are moving to the burbs. Let's get exposed. Next. Tonight, Halloween on Exposure begins with suburban legends. First, an innocent game takes a supernatural turn. Then two friendly neighbors share a shocking secret. Plus, who thought stealing a cookie would lead to this? And an accused criminal really isn't what he seems. Exposure. Dead Time Stories. Downloading host profile, Lisa Marie. Star of such chilling films as Sleepy Hollow, Mars Attacks, and Ed Wood, in which she appeared as 50s Fright Night host, Vampira. Currently, she is co-creating a short film for the Walker Art Center. It's October on Exposure, and all month long, we're celebrating Halloween with dead time stories. Tonight, what was urban has gone suburban. As those chilling rumors you've talked about and eagerly read on the net vividly come to life as suburban legends. Four shocking short films that could happen next door. We begin with the story of the birthday party from hell. You know the one where the four girls get together, break out the Ouija board, and then the phone rings. Star 69 was written, directed, and edited by Basil Drips. Born in Salem, Massachusetts, but raised in Atlanta, Drips attended the University of Georgia, where he studied drama and screenwriting. After graduation, he became an assistant editor and eventually a full-time editor at Magic Lantern Productions, working on commercials and feature films. Anybody need a refill? Oh, Julie oh, does. Yes. <laughs> okay. Put your hands on the glass. I think we almost got something. Okay. I've never done this before. The whole concept is a bit freaky. Oh, don't worry. Yeah. Maybe we'll meet the man of my dreams. We don't want one that's already dead. Hello? <laughs> Are there any blonde, blue-eyed, muscular, tan, only wearing a loincloth men who uh, make 100K a year? 100K? Suzanne, you don't have high standards, do you? I have what you call large needs. Uh, stop pushing it, OK? It's supposed to flow naturally. Uh, what do we do? Ask it a question? Mm -hmm. Try it. OK. Ask it a question. I don't know what to ask. You ask it something, Jules. Who is out here with us tonight? <laughs> <laughs> okay, I think we need to be more specific. Um, is there anybody besides the four of us in this room? If there is, please talk to us. Uh 
<laughs> All right, girls, I think we have a ghost at our fingertips. Oh! Are you male? female. How old are you? You're six. It's a little girl. That's it. Oh, no. Come on, you can't stop now. Yeah. It's my birthday. Don't be a wuss. Put your hands back on the heart. Come on. Ah! <laughs> <laughs> okay. Shh. Okay. Are you still with the four of us? What's your name? My name also. Did you know that we share the same name? <laughs> oh, uh, how did she know oh. that? <laughs> a, D, D. She spelled out daddy. Who's your daddy? <laughs> Sam, are you serious? I wonder what she means. I'm gonna ask her how she died. No, don't do that. You what? might upset her. She might not know she's dead. Hello, Jenny. Do you realize that you are no longer on this planet? Jenny, do you, do you realize you're dead? Cool. Uh. Maybe she can hook us up with Elvis or Jim Morrison. Okay, Jenny. <laughs> Jenny, just ignore her and tell me. <laughs> how did you die? Are you spilling daddy again? Okay, she just didn't understand me. Let me try to get Uh How did you leave this earth? Her daddy killed her. No, that's it. It's quitting time. Okay, what are we gonna do? She wants to talk to her daddy who killed her. <sighs> Jenny, how can we talk to your dad? Uh, okay, Becca, you got free hands. Here, write these down. Yeah. <laughs> Hell no, I'm not writing anything down. This is wrong. I'll do it. Um, can you repeat that again, please? She's listening to us as if she's right in the room with us. She is right in the room with us. Do you have any ideas? It's probably the code of the kingdom of hell. It's a phone number. It's our area code. Oh, it is. We should call it. No. Becca's right. This is starting to spook me. Come on. It's just a phone call. No, God, you're insane, girl. Julie. Oh, my God, it's ringing. Ah! What was that all about? <gasps> Some guy answered it. I got scared. <laughs> Okay, <laughs> you guys are tarts. Let's just get out of here. Let's go to a bar or something. <gasps> yeah. My own bedroom is starting oh. to scare me. You're right. I think the bars are calling. So which one do you want to go to? I wonder if she's still here in the room with us. What if he star 69'd us? Oh, somebody answer it. Julie, you made the call. You answer it. Why me? It's Rebecca's place. 
But you were the brave one. Hello? He asked for you. Wait for me. But he said my name. Julie, put down the phone. Wait, who is it? It was some guy. He asked for you. Julie, hang up the phone. Did he say my name or did he say It Jenny? was some guy. He asked for you. Did he say my name or did he say Jenny? Julie, hang up the phone. Julie, did he say Jennifer or did he say Jenny? He asked me where Jen was. Should I have answered him? No. Let's just get out of here. Wait, what did he sound like? I mean, he was older, like in the 40s. Well, it could have been a coincidence. Who knew you were here tonight? I don't know. Oh, well, then it's just a coincidence. It's just a weird coincidence. But he, he didn't say your name. He said my name. But yeah, why did, I'm why did the one who has to live here. So let's just chalk it up to a weird night and let's just get out of here. Let's go get drunk. We'll yeah. cruise the bars and look yeah. for guys. Or no, let's I just know. forget it. Yeah, let, let's stay here because who knows, he may call back and Jennifer has always liked older men. <laughs> <laughs> okay, no thanks. I think I need a long, tall drink. Okay, good. Where are we gonna go? go. Oh, <gasps> here, but I'll drive. Uh, uh oh. Okay, I don't From Atlanta, Georgia, here is director Basil Drips. This film I really am proud of because we did it from scratch. Didn't know what we were doing. We just went in head first and decided to make a movie. Um, the inspiration and the idea behind Star 69, it was actually based on a true story that happened to a friend of mine a long time ago. She was playing with the Ouija board with her friends in her dorm room, and they came in communication with the ghost of a little girl. Now, this little girl said that she was killed by her father. And when she told me the story, I always had it in my mind. You know, that would be a pretty good idea for a short film. I mean, it kind of creeps me out, but uh, I like the chance to be able to dress up and, you know. I remember this vividly. We went to one of those drugstores and bought one of those little masks. Mm -hmm. And there was no name that I could find of what this was. Uh -huh. So I looked on the box and it said, flame retardant. <laughs> so I went around telling everybody that I was flame retardant. <laughs> Next, sugar, spice, and things not so nice are the ingredients of a very special cake when Dead Time Stories on Exposure continues. 2001 Exposure Short Film Festival is coming to New York City on October 17th, featuring the world premiere of Exposure Studios' first short film production, The Man With No Eyes. For more details, log on at exposure.sci-fi.com. Get exposed. You gotta destroy that rock, no matter what. Got it? Yeah! Soul Keeper, Saturday at 9 on Sci-Fi. Now on Devils and other things that go in the night, host Lisa Marie brings you Dead Time Stories. What are you afraid of? On Exposure, every Sunday at midnight. Only on Sci-Fi. Let's get exposed. Now, more Dead Time Stories on Exposure with host Lisa Marie. Our next suburban legend may not be that familiar to you. But its shocking finale is something you'll never forget. It's the one about two women, a dog, and a very special cake, whose main ingredient, it turns out, is uncontrollable rage. See if you can put the pieces together in the birthday cake. 
The birthday cake is Barclay Hope's directorial debut. Born and raised in Montreal, Canada, Hope attended the Ryerson Polytechnical Institute where he fell in love with acting. It became his profession and over the last 20 years, he's appeared in dozens of television series including Forever Night and in the feature film Cruel Intentions 2. She was such a cute little thing. <laughs> Just make yourself at home. Maybe she just wandered off. He's afraid of strangers. Okay, we need a half a cup of sugar, butter, that's in the fridge. Mm. It's in the door. Okay. Somebody's birthday? It's Richard's. Do you want a fun job? Your husband. He's 48 years old today. Why don't you cut these up? <laughs> I'm, I'm sorry. I mean, I'm, well, you live right across the street from me. And I, well, I don't even know your name. Rachel. Rachel, Rachel yes, Rachel. And, uh, well, I'm, <laughs> I'm embarrassed. That's all right. I've only been there since uh, last February. Well, I see you practically every day. I mean, you're out there every morning walking that dog of yours. Boy, for a little thing, she sure packed a lot of bark, huh? She had that sweet little yip. <laughs> that little yip, 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 yip. <laughs> He, he, uh, he, well, he'll turn up. Okay. Uh, okay. Egg. Mm. In the fridge. Okay, we've creamed the butter. The sugar. Mm -hmm. Richard's mother used to make him this cake. I'm going to surprise him. I sent him on this wild goose chase so I can get this done. Of course, he's usually here on Tuesday morning. <laughs> problem. There's more where that came from.
Floors are so clean. Thank you. You and Richard seem like very nice people. Thank you. You seem like you would have made wonderful parents. What makes you say that? You had some children over during the summer. Oh, yeah, my sisters. And your husband, he would lift them into the air and spin them around and around. And, and the way you watched him. And you saw all this? I was walking my dog. He seemed like such a young man. <laughs> well, he's not. <laughs> He's 48. Can I use your bathroom? Leave it. I don't mind. Richard's mother gave me that plate. Everything here is so nice. How old are you? clean the dishes. I have to will myself to cook or eat because it seems so pointless sitting by yourself. Oh. Sometimes I'll be watching a, a, a talk show and, and I'll find myself smiling at <laughs> some reunion or, or a joke that Oprah's made. And, and I, I feel the smile on my face, and I just want to punch it right off. I want to punch it right off my face. You miss your dog. Stay tuned for the conclusion of The Birthday Cake. There's nothing between you and the next tragedy except that little yip. That little yip, 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 yip. When exposure continues. For centuries, 
found by these guys. I haven't had a Willys like this since I saw the crying game. There's some angry monsters coming this way that are gonna eat our faces up. Ah, uh, boy. How could that possibly be good? A sci-fi pictures, original movie we event. We gotta destroy that rock, no matter what. Got it? Yeah! Soul Keeper, Saturday at 9 on Sci-Fi. Brought to you by Jeep 4x4s. Look at this Thirty-three may seem young to you, because you're with Richard. You know, I mean, you have a reason to bake a cake. <laughs> In the cupboard above the sink, you'll find a small clear plastic bag full of shredded coconut. And beside that, a bag of pecans. Could you get those for me, please? Is that lipstick? I hope you don't mind. Well, it would have been nice if you asked. But no, I don't mind. It looks nice on you. Richard gave it to me. He bought it from a woman who came to the door. The top cupboard. You're just gonna have to give up hoping and get a new dog. Oh, I'm sorry. Oh, sometimes I can be so brutally honest. <laughs> Richard used to love that about me. I just can't help thinking about you, all alone at night, and, and how terrifying that, that must feel. Really, there's nothing between you and the next tragedy except that little yip. That little yip, 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 yip. He liked to bark, and so you must cling to hope. I know why I would. Who knows where he might turn up? Do you want some? No, thank you. I'm feeling naughty. Do you ever feel naughty, Rachel? In the morning? Sometimes I'll... Uh... I mean, look at me. <laughs> it's not even noon yet. I'm going to speak to Richard. <gasps> He'll want to give you a little something. Richard loves to give. <laughs> Hey, maybe he could get you a new dog. When's your birthday? Please, no. Did you leave some food out? Yes. Then he'll come back. I believe he will. You're in mind. Pardon? I said, that's the spirit. I'm so glad to be getting to know you. I mean, what do you really know about the person who lives across the street? Do I really seem happy to you? If Richard had been here this morning, we wouldn't be having this conversation. I'm so glad to get to know you. If Richard had been here. He told you, didn't he? <laughs> And you have your meetings on Tuesday. Don't before. make me ask you again. Underwear. Hmm. 
sexy underwear? Don't you think I'd notice some underwear? Who do you think buys his underwear? <gasps> oh, about your dog. From Toronto, Canada, here is director Barclay Hope and friends. Uh, my name is Barclay Hope. I was the director and producer of The Birthday Cake. Uh, sitting across from me is Rick Robertson. He uh, wrote the piece. And sitting on my left here is Marjorie Campbell. She plays Rachel. And sitting on my right is my lovely wife, Lindsay Collins, and she plays Ellen. It was Rick's idea to write it for the two wives. You said to Lindsay, what do you want? And Lindsay said, well, it has to be starring Myself and Marshall. Uh, if you consider that these two women lived doors apart, and yet their existences are so totally different, their lives are, they just don't touch each other because their lives are so completely different. Like somebody going into extreme grief over their dog, if you don't know the person of the dog, it seems absurd. And the same thing, somebody fighting for their husband's love. Their behaviors may seem absurd, but it's, it's not absurd from the, the person's point of view. What's scary about so the suburbia that I can just see from the outside is the sameness of each yeah. house yeah. and each lifestyle. You get so obsessed with your, the boundaries of your home and your your, your yard, your, the your walls. Stuff. You get stuck inside, and that becomes kind of a place of mental chaos. Even in Toronto, we have our own little um, neighborhoods, which are like theme parks. Each one has its own little style of living yeah. that you kind of yeah. buy into when you move into oh. it, which is not unlike moving into suburbia. The whole thing about how well, how well do you know your neighbor? Is usually the answer is not at all. Next, what can make a dying man get out of bed? Why, fresh baked cookies, of course. What's the catch? Find out when Exposure's Dead Time Stories continue. Think for what? You got it? Yeah! <laughs> what is it? Where did it come from? And who, in the name of God, put it there? We are rangers. We live for the one. We die for the one. We've got company. You know what I can do. Come on, Charlie. Show us what you're made of. Original movies made by sci-fi, only on sci-fi. Sci-fi pictures, Ooh. we get it. Now, more dead time stories on exposure with host Lisa Marie. Our next suburban legend is the one about the old man, his loving wife, and a plate full of warm chocolate chip cookies. It stars Francis Bay, who you'll recognize from Seinfeld, Twin Peaks, and the movie Happy Gilmore. And it's got one hell of a twisted ending. As the sugar fix leads to tragedy in Cookies for Harry. Cookies for Harry was directed by Nicholas Peterson. Born on an Air Force base in Idaho, Peterson eventually ended up in Utah, where he attended Dixie College. He then studied experimental animation at CalArts and worked as a puppet designer and set builder on the Oscar-winning short Moore. Currently, he is employed as a motion control producer at Image G Studios.
Rich and I were happy. You know it's time to go. Say goodbye. After a while, you lose that smile and say goodbye. You'll never know if you can fly until you spread your wings and cry. Say goodbye. Say goodbye. Those are for your funeral. From B&L Pastries in Los Angeles, California, here is director Nicholas Peterson. Of course it's a true story. I'm not those filmmakers who lie and try to deceive my audience. I bring them truth and only the truth. I don't know if the darker things make you laugh, but I don't think death is as dark as people really believe it is. Like, I feel like cookies for Harry. I don't think it's very depressing, but it is a jolt. And that is what I think attracts me to that story and that whole thing. The ironic thing is that right after I finished it, an uncle of mine died. And um, everyone's dying, my family. Uh, so he died, and I went back to Utah for the funeral. And everyone's like, oh, let's see your new film. Where's your new film at? I was like, I don't know if I want to show it. But I showed it to them, and they, they got a kick out of it. They liked it. Next, a routine investigation and the man with nothing to hide. I've done nothing wrong. When Dead Time Stories on Exposure continues. On Exposure, every Sunday at midnight. Only on Sci-Fi. Let's get exposed. Now, more Dead Time Stories on Exposure with host Lisa Marie. Every neighbor's got one. The loner. The bachelor at the end of the block. The nice guy with the crooked smile. Who's got to be hiding something. Who, me, is our last and most telling suburban legend. A dark comedy that proves things are never what they seem. 
Who Me was written and directed by Dane Picard, who was born in Lincoln, Nebraska with the farmers and was raised in Salt Lake City, Utah with the Mormons. He got his MFA from CalArts and now works as a freelance computer animator and visual effects artist in Los Angeles. He's completed two more shorts since Who Me and is currently working on his next project, The Walter Mitty Condition. Anthony Polito? Yeah? I'm Detective Rich, and this is Detective Sims. We had a report that you have pictures of naked girls on your walls. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, um, come on in. <clears throat> You must mean these photographs. A uh, famous photographer, Jock Sturgis, took them. So you didn't take these pictures? No. Here, I have a... I have a book of his photographs. Are these photographs in the book? Uh, no. Not these particular ones, but they are from the same time period. Who are the girls in the pictures? I don't know. They're Sturgis's models. They're nudists. So you don't know them and you didn't take these pictures? No, I don't know them. I thought that maybe they were relatives of yours. Your cousins or nieces. No, I don't know them. Who filed this report, anyway? We can't disclose that information, Mr. Polito. Well, I've done nothing wrong. This guy's a famous photographer. It's fine art. It's not pornography. He's never been convicted of anything. He's an artist. All right. We'll check into this Sturges. I mean, everything looks all right. If you haven't taken the pictures, you haven't done anything wrong. You know, we just have to check all reports that come our way. So, what happens now? I don't want my name on some report saying I was accused of being a pornographer. I expect you to send me a copy of that report when you finish it. We'd be happy to do that. I'm certain this matter is closed. We'll send you a copy of the report. Have a good day, Mr. Polito. All right. Goodbye. <clears throat> Nagra. Time stories when exposure continues. Sci-fi pictures, original movie events. You gotta destroy that rock, no matter what. Got it? Yeah. Soul Keeper, Saturday at nine on Sci-Fi. Here's your large pizza. Unbelievable. Where is home? K Pax. It's about one thousand light years away from here. His behavior is unusual. Your produce alone has been worth the trip. But on October 26th... You're really from up there? Celebrate the possibilities. OK. She says she doesn't like it when you sneak up on her. No way. K-Pax. Be prepared for anything. Rated PG-13 at theaters Friday, October 26th. You probably... Tuesday, October 16th, only on USA. Now, Dead Time Stories on Exposure continues with host Lisa Marie.
to revisit some of tonight's chilling suburban legends, just log on now at exposure.sci-fi.com. Log on at exposure.sci-fi.com to re-experience some of tonight's suburban legends or any film from Exposure's extensive short film library. Plus, get the facts on Exposure Studios and see interviews with past Exposure directors. What do you really know about the people across the street? About the apartments that surround you? About those you call your fiends and neighbors? I mean your friends and neighbors. Maybe you should find out, or not. See you next week when Halloween on Exposure continues with more dead time stories. Pleasant dreams.